test track opened to the public in the spring of 1999. It was not only unique from any ride that Disney had ever built before, but it was also unlike anything else in the entire theme park industry. The fast-paced attraction was a brand new take on the already successful dark ride concept, and it took things to the next level by combining immersive scenery and storytelling with high speeds and hairpin turns. These thrilling elements provided a more intense experience, almost like a roller coaster. However, the way that test track works is different because it is not powered by gravity. Instead of using an existing technology, Disney Imagineering teamed up with a company called Dynamic Attractions to develop a new type of ride system. One that put passengers behind the wheel of a self-driving electric vehicle on an actual road surface. This made the ride feel as close as possible to literally driving a car around a racetrack, since the ride vehicles operate just like real cars under the hood. The real sensation of driving was crucial to the ride's overall theme, which is something that actually predates Test Track by more than 20 years, all the way back to a former attraction that was housed in the same building. To summarize a bit of history, the Walt Disney Company had originally entered into a sponsorship deal with General Motors in the late 1970s, and they worked together to build a ride called World of Motion, which debuted at the grand opening of Epcot in 1982. This was an Omnimover type attraction that took guests through the entire history of human transportation, starting at the very beginning with the invention of the wheel, and culminating with modern automobiles by showing off GM's latest designs and futuristic prototypes. The ride would operate for just over 13 years as Disney and General Motors worked through several contract negotiations, but it was around 1992 that GM decided it was time to build something new with a more direct focus on their car lineup. This is when Dynamic Attractions was brought on board to help engineer the new ride system, and the initial design concept for Test Track was slowly brought to life through four years of research and development, before being officially revealed to the public in 1996. Test Track was set to be an innovative thrill ride that would take passengers through a mock-up of the General Motors Proving Ground, which is a real facility where GM vehicles are tested before going into production. The central idea or storyline would essentially put the guests in place of crash test dummies as their vehicle is taken through a series of performance tests in different driving scenarios. These included an accelerated hill climb at a 15 degree angle, a suspension test on a variety of road surfaces, an anti-lock brake test with ABS turned both off and on, a series of environmental chambers for temperature and corrosion, and a handling test with blind turns and a near miss with a semi-truck. At the end of the ride, the grand finale would begin with a barrier test, where the car would accelerate towards a wall that opened at the very last second to reveal an outdoor track. Here the car would travel down a straightaway and through a boot shape to turn around, followed by a high speed lap around the exterior of the building, reaching a top speed of 65 miles per hour before returning back inside. The attraction was originally expected to open in the spring of 1997 only 16 months after World of Motion was closed to make way for its construction. However, the ride was unfortunately plagued by technical issues that were discovered during initial testing. One of the most notable problems was related to the control system, which had to manage up to 29 vehicles on the course at any given time in order to meet capacity requirements. The software that was initially written to control the ride was only able to handle a maximum of 6 vehicles without crashing, and after extensive troubleshooting, it was eventually determined that the software had to be rewritten from scratch a process that would take the engineers an extra year and a half to complete. Test Track would finally have a soft opening during the winter of 1998, but the ride was still prone to frequent errors and breakdowns at that time, and the official opening was delayed further until the spring of 1999, almost two years later than initially planned. Despite the extensive delays, Test Track still turned out to be a huge success for Disney, as well as a fan favorite among visitors, and it operated without any major changes until the spring of 2012. As the existing sponsorship deal with General Motors was coming to an end, GM ultimately decided that the ride needed another refresh in order to renew the contract. However, instead of constructing a whole new attraction, this time they would simply work with Disney to reskin the existing one, which would now focus on their Chevrolet lineup as opposed to GM as a whole. The ride closed for an 8 month refurbishment as the interior of the building was completely overhauled, and it reopened at the end of the year with a new modern theme that still remains in place today. Rather than maneuvering through a physical test facility, passengers now board a virtual car called a sim car, and they evaluate its performance in a simulated environment called the sim track. Guests have the opportunity to design their own concept vehicle in a Chevrolet design studio as they move through the queue, and that design gets paired to their respective sim car so they can see how it fares out on the course. This interactive system was created by a technology consulting company called Polysonics, who designed everything from the screens and user interface to the custom graphics and animations as well as all of the underlying software for show control and RFID tracking. After a guest creates a custom vehicle in the design studio, 
This system then links that design to an RFID tag located in the guest's wristband or keycard, and the ride will display performance stats for the vehicle as they navigate around the track. This adds a level of interactivity and competition that wasn't present in the original version of Test Track. However, it is really just an overlay that has no real impact on the ride itself. The actual course is still exactly the same as it was before, but the various tests have been rethemed to evaluate four main criteria, which are capability, efficiency, responsiveness, and power. I think the idea that Disney and GM were going for with the sim track is that passengers are meant to be testing a car inside a computer simulation, just like one an automotive engineer might use when designing a new vehicle. However, I don't think the storyline is quite as clear as it was with the former Proving Ground. Nonetheless, the underlying ride system has remained effectively unchanged since Test Track first opened more than 20 years ago. The indoor portion of the attraction is housed inside a massive circular building with a diameter of 320 feet, and it contains more than 3 acres of total floor space. The building was originally constructed to resemble the wheel of a car in order to go along with the transportation theme for World of Motion, but of course, the design is still equally fitting for Test Track. Under the roof, the ride layout is split between two primary levels. The lower level contains the station and loading area, as well as a backstage section leading to the maintenance bay, while the rest of the space is used for the queue, gift shop, vehicle displays, and mechanical rooms. The station is connected to a circular launch zone where the final safety checks are performed, and this leads into the three-story hill climb up to the second level. All the dark ride scenes are packed in up here without much room to spare, and there are a couple of elevation changes between 0 and 12 feet off the ground, so the track can weave over and under itself. There is also a long section of storage track hidden in another backstage area, which runs underneath the responsiveness test and over to the far end of the capability test at the opposite end of the building. The sliding barrier wall is located in the northeast quadrant where the track exits to the outside, and the ride heads out and back through an employee parking lot before completing a lap around the building and re-entering back into the station. In total, the ride has almost exactly one mile of track, with about half a mile inside and half a mile outside, making it the longest track ride that Disney has built to date. And with a top speed of 65 miles per hour, it is also the fastest ride that Disney has ever built, thanks to the clever ride system from Dynamic Attractions. The way it works is similar to a slot car set, where the car has an electric motor that receives power through conductive strips embedded in the track, and it is guided along by a pin that runs in a small groove. Test Track is essentially just a life-size version of this, but with real cars and a more advanced control system. Each vehicle has four rubber tires that are in contact with the road surface, and these are the actual drive wheels that support the weight of the car and drive it forward. The wheels are driven by a 250 horsepower electric motor located in the trunk, which can accelerate the car from 0 to 65 miles per hour in about 8.8 seconds, while the onboard computers and electronics are stored in the front. Although the ride vehicles were always intended to be electric, the very first one was actually a gas-powered prototype that was built as a proof of concept during development, and it revealed early on that the car's weight was going to pose a significant challenge. The prototype frequently broke its axles and blew out tires due to the high stress, and so a lot of engineering effort was focused on weight reduction for the final design. As a result, every test track vehicle has a chassis that is constructed entirely from composite materials without any steel, and the tires were specially designed by Goodyear to handle the intense driving conditions. Goodyear went through several iterations as the ride was being tested in order to get the performance and drive quality just right, while also making sure that the tires could hold up to the 140 miles that each car travels per day. Even with the weight reduction measures, each car still weighs in at approximately 4,800 pounds, which is comparable to an electric sedan like a Tesla Model S. The ride vehicles actually have a lot in common with high-end electric cars, including the six-figure price tag. However, each one is secured to a track and bus bar system that runs underneath the road. There are two bogies that extend below the chassis at the front and rear of the car, each with eight wheels that lock the vehicle to a pair of rails just like a roller coaster. The large horizontal ones are guide wheels that keep the vehicle centered on the track, and the smaller vertical ones are upstop wheels that prevent the car from lifting off the road surface. The road has a continuous opening down the center with one rail positioned on either side, and so the internal structure is basically two separate tracks that run parallel to each other while the bogies travel down the middle. Directly underneath the bogies, the track structure also houses a bus bar system that is used for power and control. The bus bar consists of six metallic strips or bars that span the entire course like a slot car track, with three bars being supported on either side. There is a collector assembly that extends down from the front bogie of the vehicle, and it has 12 spring-loaded arms with conductive pads called collector shoes. 
two of these shoes are pressed into contact with each bar at all times, which allows the vehicle to pick up or collect the current that is flowing through them. The bars are intentionally oriented facing down with the collectors pressing up, so if anything were to fall through the opening above, it will not cause a short circuit. The three bus bars shown on the right carry 480 volts AC in three phases, with each bar carrying one phase, while the first bar on the left carries a ground signal. The two remaining bars are used for communication between the central controller and the vehicles, and they also divide the course into separate block zones. Safety is a critical component of the ride, since there can be up to 29 cars on the same track at any given time, and the control system manages this many vehicles by spacing them between the zones, so that the chance of a collision is basically zero. The system has undergone a number of upgrades over the years, including a recent overhaul in early 2020. However, the fundamental principles are still the same. The first communication bus bar is used to carry a GO signal from the central controller, which indicates that it is safe to proceed, and when a vehicle is present, it applies its own no-go signal to the second bus bar, which tells the controller and other vehicles that it is not safe to enter the same zone. A vehicle is only allowed to enter a zone when the GO signal is active and when the no-go signal is not active, and the system will always maintain a buffer of at least one zone between them. If a car infringes on that buffer, then the controller will drop the GO signal for the trailing vehicle, and it will come to a stop until the lead car has cleared the adjacent section. The only exception to this is on the hill climb at the beginning of the ride, where the vehicles are actually permitted to occupy adjacent zones at the same time. In addition to stopping vehicles individually, the central controller also has the ability to stop all the cars at once by dropping the GO signal throughout the entire course. However, the 480 volt power bus bars will still remain online unless a full e-stop is triggered. To ensure that the ride is fail-safe, the computers on board the vehicles are redundant with two identical devices operating in parallel, and any fault or discrepancy between them will automatically bring the whole ride to a stop. The computers continuously measure the vehicle's position and speed, and they use a set of feedback loops to control the electric motor so that the speed always matches the predetermined ride program that is stored in memory. Both are independently coupled to the bus bar system and an array of onboard sensors as well as to a digital transceiver that is mounted on the bottom of the chassis, which communicates with the central controller wirelessly. Each car operates on its own specific frequency, and the controller sends and receives signals using antennas installed under the track, in order to avoid outside interference. This wireless communication system provides highly accurate position tracking, which is especially important in the station area where the vehicles need to move in close proximity, and it is also used for reporting vehicle status and any faults. For an added layer of redundancy, the vehicles verify their position by physically measuring the distance that they travel along the track using a set of idler wheels, and so together with the bus bar and wireless control, it is virtually impossible for more than one car to be in the same zone at any time. However, in order for the control system to be effective, it is equally important for the ride to have a robust braking system that can bring all the cars to a stop safely. Each vehicle is equipped with hydraulic disc brakes just like a regular car, but there are dual calipers on every pad for extra stopping power, and these are only activated if the ride needs to come to an immediate stop. The disc brakes are not used to slow the vehicle during normal operation since this can be done using the electric motor, and the pads would also wear out too quickly. When current is removed from the motor, it will naturally act as a generator and slow the car down with dynamic braking as it converts kinetic energy back into electrical energy. This is similar to the regenerative braking that is used on most electric cars today, However, Test Track does not use batteries, so the excess energy is simply dissipated rather than stored. The current being delivered to the motor is precisely regulated to achieve the desired stopping force, and it can even be reversed to produce a greater negative torque for additional braking power. To make the system redundant, each vehicle also has a set of fail-safe disc brakes that will engage automatically during an e-stop or power loss. These essentially work in the opposite way to standard disc brakes, because pressure needs to be applied to disengage the brake, rather than applying pressure to engage the brake. With the failsafe version, the pads are spring-loaded against the rotor, and a constant force is needed to keep them apart. The vehicle is able to hold the brakes open and drive freely as long as the bus bar is powered on, but they will clamp shut and stop the ride as soon as power is lost. Together, these independent braking mechanisms ensure that the cars will always be able to stop safely in any situation, which is the number one priority for minimizing the risk of a collision. Of course, proper maintenance is also extremely important with all of the complex systems on board, and so the vehicles are frequently inspected and maintained just like any regular car. Plus, each one is routinely disassembled and fully rebuilt in order to check every component for damage and wear. 
If you take away the bogies, then each car is basically a real electric vehicle that requires the same level of care. And in theory, if you just added the battery and manual controls, then you could actually drive one down a city street. Now even with all of the safety features and redundancies, one part of the ride that still seems slightly dangerous is the barrier wall that appears to open at the last second. Here the slotting doors are equipped with sensors that will tell the controller to stop the car if they are not functioning properly, and even if that failed, the doors are actually constructed from a soft styrofoam material so the car can easily break through. This really exemplifies how Disney and Dynamic Attractions took every precaution to make the ride as safe as possible, which is exactly what should be done when designing a new type of attraction from the ground up. The innovative slot car system has proven to be successful despite the initial challenges to get it up and running, and it set the groundwork for future versions, like Radiator Springs Racers at Disney California Adventure and Journey to the Center of the Earth at Tokyo Disney Sea. The engineering behind Test Track was cutting edge in the industry when it opened more than 20 years ago, and I think the technology that drives this high-speed attraction is just as impressive today as it was back then. I hope you have enjoyed seeing how it all works, and I really need to give a big thanks to today's sponsor NordVPN for helping to make this video possible. Online privacy is a serious concern these days, whether you're streaming content and working from home, or maybe you're traveling to a hotel or a theme park and using public Wi-Fi. Regardless of how you use the internet, Using NordVPN helps you to stay anonymous by routing your connection through an encrypted tunnel and masking your IP address. This prevents your service provider from tracking the websites that you visit, and it stops third parties and hackers from being able to access your personal data. Getting connected only takes a single click with the easy-to-use app on desktop, iOS, or Android, and you can connect up to six devices at once with no limit on bandwidth. In addition to online security, NordVPN can also be used to access geo-restricted web pages by selecting a server in another country, which allows you to access content that may not be available in your region. There's even an ad blocking feature built right into the app, so you can avoid malicious websites and hide intrusive advertising, including pop-ups and autoplay video ads. NordVPN is a powerful tool that puts you in complete control of your internet experience, and I definitely recommend giving them a try by going to nordvpn.com slash artofengineering. They are currently offering a huge discount on a two-year plan with four extra months for free. Plus, there's absolutely no risk with their 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash artofengineering, or you can simply use the link in the description below. Don't forget to leave a like and hit subscribe if you enjoyed today's video, and remember to click the bell to get notified every time a new one comes out. I'd also love to hear any stories about your personal experience on Test Track down in the comments, and let me know if there are any other attractions that you would like to see covered on this channel next. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.